Let's go. Why not? Interesting facts about famous people. William Holden, Westerns. Nineteen eighteen to nineteen eighty one was an actor and one of the biggest box office draws of the nineteen fifties. I've always liked William Holden. He always had that confidence and rough suaveness that made him such a great character. The camera loved him. Everybody loved him back. Today we will take a look at the westerns he made, great additions to the genre. Holden won the Academy Award for Best Actor for the film Stalag Seventeen, nineteen fifty three. And the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Limited or Anthology Series or Movie for the television miniseries The Blue Knight, 1973. Holden starred in some of Hollywood's most popular and critically acclaimed films, including Sunset Boulevard, 1950, Sabrina, 1954, Picnic, 1955, The Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957. If you'd been as intent on pleasing her, the Wild Bunch, 1969, and Network, 1976, named one of the top ten stars of the year six times, 1954 to 58, and 1961, and appeared as 25th on the American Let's Film go. Institute's list of 25 greatest male stars okay. of classic Hollywood Straight. cinema. Okay, if you enjoy this you video, mind, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many, many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate it. I heard you Let's get into it. I'm sorry I didn't answer. Texas, 1941, as Dan Thomas. Two Confederate veterans, broke and homeless, are making their way to Texas to start fresh. After comedic adventures, getting into and out of trouble, just trying to make enough money to get to Texas, they witness a stagecoach robbery and manage to hold up the outlaws and take back the cash. At that point, they have a difference of opinion. The good one, Todd Ramsey, Glenn Ford, wants to give it back. The bad one, Dan Thomas, William Holden, wants to keep it and keep going. Goodness wins out and both are off the hook. Ain't I the darndest liar? Come on! <laughs> the Man from Colorado, 1948, as Dell Stewart. Two friends return home after their discharge from the army after the Civil War. However, one of them has deep-rooted psychological damage due to his experiences during the war. And as his behaviour becomes more erratic and violent, his friend desperately tries to find a way to help him. Columbia Pictures spent quite a bit on The Man from Colorado. At one point, the crew dynamited the side of a 1,500-foot mountain in California's San Fernando Valley in order to create a deep gorge, as called for in the script. And the western town they constructed was one of the largest location sets ever built by Columbia up to that time. During filming of a massive fire scene at the end, however, the set caught fight uncontrollably, and Holden and Ford tried to actually fight the fire until the fireman could arrive. Streets of Laredo, 1949, as Jim Dawkins. Texas, 1878. Cheerful outlaw buddies, Jim, Lorne and Wahoo, rescue spunky orphan, Rani Carter, from rustling racketeers, then are forced to separate. Lorne goes on to bigger and better robberies while Jim and Wahoo are, at first reluctantly, manoeuvred into joining the Texas Rangers, for friendship's sake. The three try to keep out of direct conflict, but a showdown begins to look inevitable, and Rani, now grown into lovely young womanhood, must choose between Lorne and Jim. This film is a remake of the 1936 film, The Texas Rangers, in which the three principal male roles were played by Fred McMurray, Jack Oakey, and Lloyd Nolan.
escaped from Fort Bravo, 1953, as Captain Roper. A ruthless Union captain is renowned throughout his prison fort as the toughest soldier in the business, capable of capturing every escaped convict under his supervision. However, when he falls in love with a visiting woman, some of the prisoners seize the advantage and try to escape while he is in a more mellow mood. William Holden did not shave his chest for his shirtless scene in the movie, as he did for most other beefcake scenes of the 1950s, thus giving audiences one of their best looks at his normally lush growth of chest hair. I believe that. Then you look big enough to handle a little trouble. Things happen fast and unexpectedly. What are you trying to do? Kill him? Why don't you take it out on me? That's what you'd really like to do. I'm the one who made a fool out of you. Go! You must have missed. No, we just killed the same one. I've seen the view. You can take me back now. The Horse Soldiers, 1959, as Major Henry Kendall. A Union cavalry outfit is sent behind Confederate lines in strength to destroy a rail supply center. Along with them is sent a doctor who causes instant antipathy between him and the commander. The secret plan for the mission is overheard by a southern belle who must be taken along to assure her silence. The Union officers each have different reasons for wanting to be on the mission. The film marked the beginning of mega deals for Hollywood stars. John Wayne me. and William Holden That's received right. $775,000 each, plus 20% of the overall profits, an unheard of sum yes, for that time. The final contract involved six war, companies and numbered it, it twice the pages of the movie's script. The film, however, was a financial failure with no profits to be shared in the end. What are the rules going to be, Colonel? Just make up your own. Oh. some water. <laughs> Alvarez Kelly, 1966, as Alvarez Kelly. Suave former Texan cattleman Alvarez Kelly now living in Mexico, has little interest in the Civil War, except to make some money. But after a long drive to deliver cattle to the Union, he finds himself kidnapped by Confederate Colonel Tom Rossiter. With the hungry troops and civilians surrounded in Richmond by the Union Army, the Colonel intends, one way or another, to persuade Kelly to help steal the herd and move it into town. Confederate money has no appeal, so the Colonel resorts to other means with unexpected results. William Holden and Richard Whitmark became good friends during the production of the film. When Whitmark became ill with the flu and was confined to his room, Holden bought him a snare drum because he knew Whitmark played the drums. Whitmark later remarked that four months of being constantly together on a film location was the equivalent of 10 or 15 years of friendship. 2,500 head of cattle. That makes 2,600 for our side. The Wild Bunch, 1969 as Pike Bishop. It's 1913 and the traditional American West is dying. Amongst the inhabitants of this dying era are a gang known as the Wild Bunch. After a failed railroad office robbery, the gang heads to Mexico to do one last job, seeing their time and lives drifting away in the 20th century. The gang takes the job and ends up in a brutally violent last stand against their enemies deemed to be corrupt in a small Mexican town ruled by a ruthless general. Sam Peckingpaw would drive his crew so hard that it sometimes created friction and confrontations between him and certain cast members. Early in the shooting, William Holden threatened to walk off the set if Peckingpaw continued to verbally abuse the crew in his presence.
Wild Rovers, 1971, as Ross Bodine. Bodine and Frank Post are cowhands on Walt Buckman's okay. R Bar okay. R Ranch. Okay. Now, what I got Bodine is, what is older doing, right? and broods a bit how he will get along right. when he's too old to be a cowboy. Is Post is young and rambunctious and ambitious for a better life than wrangling cows. When one of their fellow cowboys is killed in a corral accident, Post suggests a way into a better life for himself and his friend, robbing a bank. Bodine reluctantly joins in the plan and the two contrive to rob the local bank. They make good their escape initially, but Walt Buckman and his two sons, John and Paul, are incensed at this betrayal by their own trusted employees. John and Paul set out to bring Bodine and Post to justice. They play hard. You and me rob us a bank. Mama, see, I, I can't honestly get too upset about it because I ain't never done nothing like this before. I sure ain't expecting I'm doing it again either. The Revengers, 1972, as John Benedict. The life of peaceful rancher John Benedict, William Holden, is torn apart when his family is massacred by a gang of marauding outlaws and his farm is destroyed. He assembles a team of men, lawless convicts, to act as his posse as he pursues the gang responsible for the deaths of his loved ones. Shot in Parral, Mexico, the same location as The Wild Bunch. Also a reunion for William Holden and Ernest Borgnine after Sam Peckingpaw's The Wild Bunch. Scott Holden, who plays the lieutenant, is the son of William Holden and actress Brenda Marshall. Holden sports virtually the same black vest he wore in The Wild Bunch, final western of William Holden. I heard your call. I'm sorry I didn't answer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.